Hello and welcome back. In this clip, we're going to continue creating more breakdowns and finishing off the blocking for this shot. Hopefully by the end of this clip, we'll have enough posing in our scene that we might be able to begin approaching it from a spline point of view and getting out of step mode and finishing off the animation. So here's a stepped mode play blast of the previous clip's work. And there's a few more poses that I need to create to uh, break down the action a little bit further. And again, having a lot of good targets to incorporate drag, overlap, and follow through in our animation. So in this area right here, we only have one pose popping from the stretch pose leading up to the high point. So there's a few breakdowns you can see in my 2D pass that we need to create and add to our animation and make sure that as we're flowing from one extreme to the next that we are using drag, overlap, and follow through. So when we look at the path that we take from the high point and we start to fall out of that extreme, we need to create some more breakdowns, which again, are gonna really help control the overlap and drag, making sure that we're leading the action with the hip and that's causing the spine and the arms and the head and neck to drag behind that action. So I'm gonna speed up the playback of the clip and then narrate over top so you can sort of see me working a little bit faster. So here I'm just beginning to step through the action. And again, I have this big gap between poses that I haven't done any breakdowns. So the first thing I'm gonna start doing is looking for a pose that I can just copy, paste, and translate. And the way that I'm translating the character up is to just grab the hips and the foot controls, the IK foot controls. And then in world mode, I'm just translating those up. So I'm just basically taking that pose and just lifting it up. And I'm not really worried about getting the pose correct completely. I'm mostly thinking about the spacing. I'm looking at where the hips need to be and how close they should get to the extreme at the top. Again, we're slowing down. We should be easing into that extreme at the top. So we should start with relatively big spacing gaps between poses in the first few frames after the jump. And then that spacing is going to really get smaller and smaller as we get towards the high point. And now as I'm refining that pose, I'm starting to add drag. So I want to make sure that the hips are leading, the legs and the feet would be a little bit behind, the arms as well. I'm going to rotate those down to show what direction they're coming from and show the direction of force of drag on them so that now the pose is starting to feel like it has a very strong sense of direction. We know where we're being led in terms of the main force, the thrust of the hips going up, and the other masses of the body are just responding to that as we move up. You can see again, I always continue to orbit around the character, look at it from as many angles as possible. And any place that I can add a little bit of drag, follow through on the limbs, particularly the arms, I'll try and see what I can do to sort of get a little bit more flexibility. Even on the shoulders, again, anything that helps show weight when you're pulling on an arm that affects not just one joint, but the entire body leading from the extremities all the way to the spine. So now I'm continuing to refine and adjust my poses. And again, really trying to look at um, ways to also avoid the problem of twinning. So if I was to mirror the arms exactly on either side of the body, it would look a little odd and very mechanical. So you can see that as I'm posing out the character, I'm trying to make sure that uh, the arms are not exactly the same as each other, the same with the legs. Again, thinking about lead and follow, picking one side of the body would be a little bit further ahead than the other and carrying that through in my design choices leading up from one extreme to the other. You'll see that I'm also flipping a lot between keys. Again, this is probably a byproduct of my training as a 2D animator, flipping paper. I really uh, have to flip through my keys, to sort of feel through the movement and see if it's working the way that I want. Again, focusing on one part of the body and then continuing to move forward and back and making sure that everything is moving the way that I want and not trying to get too fixated on everything at once, just working on one control at a time, looking at how it moves. And again, that's always going to be the hips because the height of the hips is controlling the spacing of the character. And that's where the weight is going to live in terms of acceleration and deceleration. And then trying to make sure that the drag and overlap I'm putting on the other extremities are working well to sell the movement. All right. So here, what I'm flipping through and trying to figure out is how the feet are going to behave as they get dragged up during our path from the stretch pose leaping up into the air. 
And again, I'm trying to make sure that the feet are doing slightly different things. They're not doing exactly the same thing at the same time. They're a little bit different heights. So I've picked one foot to lead. So it's the screen right foot, the character's left foot, and that's going to reach the high point first. So in my breakdowns, I'm trying to figure out how that's going to work, that one foot is going to hit its high point a few frames before the other foot, and they're both going to make a path going up and then down. I also want to make sure that I'm dragging the foot behind from the ankle. So as we go up, the ankle drags behind. And then as we move down, the ankle is going to rotate and the foot's going to sort of curl up. So the toe of the shoe is going to lift up as we go down. And I want to make sure that both feet are doing similar actions, but not exactly at the same time. And the same principle I'm using as well on the arms, again, trying to make sure that um, there is lead and follow. So the upper arm is leading the action, and then the elbow, wrist, and even the fingers to some extent are dragging behind that action, making sure that, again, we don't have those uh, timings and spacings exactly the same for the different parts of the arm. So as I continue to block my way through the footage here, I'm beginning to scrub through quite a bit and really trying to feel the flow and rhythm between poses. So when I'm looking at the way that the character is preparing to jump, again, I'm looking at my 2D image and I'm looking at the poses that I have and I'm seeing if there's anything that I need to do to help um, capture that change in shape that I got so easily with line drawings. So it takes quite a bit of time to make sure that you're sculpting the pose. And particularly when you look in the side view here, looking at the torso, it's really important that the spine to the hips, where I really get a good sense of compression, that's my squash. And then of course I'm working on the legs here to add drag, overlap, and follow through. And I'm picking one leg to lead. So one is always gonna be a little bit ahead of the other. And I figure out sort of which one is going to move up and down first at the high point of the arc. And then I'm also gonna add a little bit of rotation. So the feet are gonna point down as we are moving up, and then they're gonna rotate at the ankle up a little bit on the way down. So here you can see, I'm just sort of noodling away, kind of finessing the spacing and working on getting a good sense of compression in the spine, making sure that I'm really cushioning into that extreme pose. There we go. And I'm also working with the feet. You can see that um, I will try to zero out any of the foot roll controls um, so that when I'm dealing with the foot in the air, I have just one control to worry about, which is usually just the rotation. Um, sometimes it's an advantage to use some of the set driven keys over there to get a shape that you want. But if you can simplify things, it just makes cleaning things up later that much less problematic instead of having to use two control curves that could potentially fight each other. And even here in front view, again, um, it's important to make sure you check things like the direction the knees are pointing. The knees should always be pointing in the general direction of the foot. If they're pointing in different directions, it is going to feel broken. And there I was just playing through the animation, looking to see if there was any areas that needed a bit more attention. And here again, I'm looking at the way the, the spine is following through and dragging behind the hip. And I need to make sure I come in here and create a good reverse curve. So I'm going to take this reverse C curve that's running through the spine, and then it's going to snap over on the extreme to a C curve. And of course, I want to make sure that that, that sense of force and direction is pulling not only the hips to the torso, but also from the torso and upper spine through to the arms, all the way down to the wrists, and even in the fingers, as you'll see in a minute. I'm going to go look at the poses here for the fingers, and I'm going to try bending the fingers back a little bit again, trying to give a sense of direction to this pose. Where am I coming from? What force is being applied? How would that have an effect on the fingers? So I'm having them uh, splay outwards and bend backwards a little bit more so the hand's quite open, and you get a feeling that it's traveling from up above, and it's going to be swinging forward. Right now that I'm looking from the front view, again, I'm trying to angle the wrist so that the hand is going to have a better silhouette from that angle, and also making sure that I get the fingers uh, silhouette as well to read really clearly and trying to get a nice outstretched view of the fingers. You can see as I'm tumbling away, it's really important to make sure you try as many channels as you can to see what they do and get experience with how to shape the fingers. Again, there's a lot of controls on the fingers. It sometimes takes quite a bit of time to get a really decent pose, but once you have it, then you can save it off and use it over and over again. And of course, 
once I've kind of got a basic pose for the hand, I'll start refining the pose of the arm again, um, looking at the arm and how the shoulder is involved in raising the arm that high above the head. It's important to make sure you are using the clavicle controls. If they're not engaged, it might feel very flat and the head and neck area will feel like it's very stiff and static and won't feel like you're getting a good stretch in the arms. With this rig, you can see there's quite a noticeable bulge under the armpit. I'm not gonna to be too concerned about that. If I just crank the clavicles up, and again, I'm getting some crashing issues along the side of the head and the hair, and I'm not gonna be concerned about that in this clip at all. We just wanna make sure we're blocking in our pose, and if we need to do any tech fixes later, then we can always approach the animation from that angle. All right, well, that's it for this clip. We'll see you in the next clip when we start refining the animation even further. See you then.